Hey guys, welcome back to the Piston Show. So this segment is called the good and the bad. And this is where we give owners a chance to talk about their own cars. Because who else to review, who, who are the best people to review re cars rather than people who actually own them? Not just over a couple of months or weeks, but over a significant amount of time. I have my friend over here with me, Azrai, who I've known for quite some time and who has bought the Civic EHEV hybrid perhaps a year ago? Yes, right? about a year ago. So, uh, 2022 or 2023 model? 2023, but it was made in 2022, 2022. according to the nameplate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I recall that when we first, when I tested the car out in, uh, that time was of course Sepang, you reached out to me and started asking me about <laughs> about the technical details about the car. Azra is a very technically oriented person, so some of his questions are like, uh, <laughs> you know, hence, you know, I th putting this video together and giving people a chance to talk about it would be, probably be better. So Azra, it's been a year, but before anything, what influenced you to pick up the Civic RS HEV? Um, actually. I was in the market for a hybrid, yeah. but a non-plug-in hybrid. I remember you came from the city, right? Yes, I yeah. came from the city, uh, the GM6, the previous generation city. Okay. So, uh, about that time last year, uh, end of 2022, I was in the lookout for a, a hybrid, okay. but I didn't want the plug-in. Hmm. Um, and when actually Perodua came out with the Ativa hybrid, yeah, yeah. I was gunning for that actually. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, I, I remember you <laughs> spoke to me about the leasing program. Yeah. yeah 500 units only on uh, 500 ringgit a month only. And yeah, yeah. Oh no, 100 units or something. 100 or something, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, not sure what happened to that. But anyway, this yeah. probably ended up much better. By, yeah. Uh, so I, so I got rejected for the leasing program, so I had to settle for a Civic. Hybrid. So, <laughs> doesn't sound like a bad deal, man. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, that's great and all, but why Civic Hybrid? Um, partly because of your review. Lah. I mean, uh, <laughs> I was looking out for the hybrids, yeah. but I was also very concerned that it wasn't a, a performance mm. hybrid from Honda. It was more for efficiency, which mm. I find the city was, it was actually that. Okay. <clears throat> then when you guys... The city uh, was actually meaning uh, efficiency. Lah. Yeah. yeah. And then when you guys reviewed this and then it turned out uh, it, it it basically uh, negated my concern because it turned out this was a, a driver's yeah. hybrid. Not bad, right? Which, I thought, which that turned me on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought when we drove it as well, I, I thought it was a good balance of you know, power and efficiency. Of course, it's not power is not great mm. in, in in the sports car kind of uh, kind of lingo, but mm. it's good enough for your daily yeah. use. But I also found that the Civic was a bit difficult to wrap my head around because to the lay, to the lame, layman, I, as a journalist, I found it difficult to explain to them uh, that it, it didn't come with a gearbox. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, that's uh, that is something I've, I I get questions on even yeah. today. Even today, I'm explaining explaining this to the uh, Civic RSEF owner group. I, I have a WhatsApp group. Yeah. So I'm explaining what actually that means. Okay. Gets a gearbox or not? Yes. Yeah. So somebody asked that today. I answer. I basically said. Um, technically, it has a gearbox because yeah. it has a box yeah. with gears in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's all yeah. it ends there. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's it's not multiple ratios. It's not multiple ratios, yeah. correct. So in your own language, the car has obviously turned you on. But in this one year, what did you really like about the car? Um, pretty much everything about it. Yeah. Uh, I've had performance cars in the past. Yeah. Not all the time, but in the past, there were one or two cars uh, that actually I look forward to getting in and taking long drives, yeah. taking the further route. This car does that for me. Right. So even this location, mm -hmm. oh, that's a good location. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice drive nice. coming here. Yeah. So it does that for me. So I'm yeah. very satisfied. Very satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. But what do you think about the seats? <laughs> that is one 
are the weaknesses. Yeah. This car is not without its minor problems. Like, like all cars as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So seats is one of the issues. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of other owners I talked to, some have complained that they have back aches yeah. after long drives. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't have aches, but yeah. it's difficult to feel comfortable in it yeah. for long drives. I think the padding of the... Because this is something that is quite unique to the RS models. Yeah. Because the, uh, because sportier and all, right? Yeah. Um, so it's not full leather. It's like... A, it's a... I, I, I don't think it's fabric, it's like something else. It's like a sweet, yeah, correct. A sweet thing with, yeah, uh, correct. mixed with yeah. leather. But the, huh? the padding of it is actually thinner to give hmm. it that sports car kind of, you know, the partial bucket seat kind of feel. Hmm. But unfortunately, when you start driving it long distances, like what you say, you start feeling that you know, the pressure points on your body. Yes. So this yeah. is something I felt that the seats of the RS uh, even back then, when I when I drove the car, I thought the padding of the seats could have been better. So having said that, I don't know if you drove the V spec. The V spec is slightly one one. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. uh, I I thought the seats on that was brilliant. Mm. That was perfect. If this car had the seats of the V spec, I think it would just be. If a non if, if Honda Malaysia introduced a non RS version of the Civic Hybrid, complete with let's say let's call it a touring pack mm -hmm. thicker seats, nice leather, maybe now they have both sound system with the CRV, yeah. you know, plonk that in over, yeah. in over here and create a touring version of a Civic Hybrid. If power got efficiency got nice leather interior, good yeah. sound system. You can call it a touring pack as well. So I, I, in my personal opinion, I think that would just perfect the the, the package. But besides this, the seats, what else about the interior? Um, besides the seats, interior, I have oh um, minor one. Mm. I wish this car had a sun sunglass holder oh. in the center. Yeah, at the top, right? Yeah, because other markets have that. Yeah. Oh, so, for the Civic. Yeah, oh, I noticed okay. other markets have that, so but this doesn't, so ah. it's like a bit of annoyance because yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't put my glasses. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I totally agree with that. It uh, has provisions for that anyway yeah, in other markets, so might as why well, not right? yeah. put it here? Yeah. So I think Honda Malaysia tries because they are locally assembled, right? Hmm. So I think the limitation is not so much uh, the availability of that so-called feature, mm -hmm. but because they are locally assembled over here, mm -hmm. I think it's more of a cost perspective and you know making sure that the assembly line can can accommodate such a thing and such so I understand about mm. the procedure but I also like the fact that it has a you know decent features is it wireless Apple CarPlay? Uh, wireless Apple CarPlay, uh, wired, Android, wired Auto. Android Auto, but yeah. even the wired Android Auto, I managed to go uh, into the diagnostics mode and then enable the wireless. Ah. Uh, but then it creates another problem okay. because uh, it forces to connect ah. without your consent. Oh right. So uh, to your your Android yeah. device. Yeah. So that annoys because my wife comes in and it just automatically connects without her consent. Oh, okay. Maybe that's why they had the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah wired. wired. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Just, just for everybody's knowledge, Azra is a very technically oriented <laughs> person, so he does all this tinkling around and such. So, oh, yeah. But how do your passengers find the car? Ah, okay. Um, generally, f friends of mine, my age, mm -hmm. our age, yeah. no problem. <laughs> but I noticed that I think uh, for older folks, mm -hmm. it's a chore to get in and out. Because the seats, right? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. seats slow. Yeah. So my parents, um, I try not to use this car when I yeah, take them out. Take them out, yeah. Uh, so that's the downside. Uh, but hey, it's a performance-oriented car, so everything yeah. is sporty. Yeah, that's... In, uh, by design, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, besides that, I mean, you got two kids, right? Yeah. So going oh, two plus one now. Oh uh, well, congrats, yeah. <laughs> man. <laughs> New one. Uh, so going out on the weekend, weekends getaway. I think you you're going away this weekend as well. The, Did that happen? Probably. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking now. We're thinking of a day trip oh. this weekend and we're going to Penang next weekend. Brilliant. So yeah. how does that work? I mean. Your boot space and such works fine. Works fine. The boot space is okay. Mm. Um, I do feel that I think the the opening mm -hmm. maybe feels a little bit can be bigger. Right. Okay, but th that's difficult uh, to yeah, yeah. change. It's very tight into the styling of the car. Yeah, yeah. Especially uh, the body as well. Yeah. 
but the space itself is plenty. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, any any complaints about NVH levels? Only the tires. The tires, right? Tires. This is across the board. All owners of the RSE have complained that the tires are noisy at, at speed, uh, compounded by the fact that because this car is significantly quieter than the turbo variants. Yeah. So it, it goes into the cabin and then it uh, you you do feel irritated. Yeah. Uh, so everybody tries to change models of some soundproofing something lah. Yeah. Uh, so topic. because the interior is quieter, yeah. so you hear everything else. Yes. I mean logic lah. Yeah. So the solution to that would be For me, I'm looking for quieter tires. Quieter tires. Some uh, owners have uh, downgraded to quieter Michelin tires. Okay. Uh, this car this car comes with PS4. Michelin. So you were saying that they downgraded from PS4 to I think Primacy. Uh, Michelin Primacy. Uh, yeah, whatever they can get, which is quieter. I think those are not only cheaper, but they are thicker profile tires as well. Uh, Some depending. Aspect I guess. ratio is the same. Okay. I think like, you can't. You don't want to change the aspect ratio. Yeah. But uh, you sacrifice on performance, lah. Those yeah. I think are more comfort tires. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. Uh, some some folks uh, fit soundproofing. Some yeah. oh okay. Uh, EV tires. Yes, yes. No soundproofing uh, in oh, the car. Foam, the foam, uh, yeah, foam, yeah, foam, yeah, foam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Foam materials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm looking out for a uh, next set of tires to replace this uh -huh. that is quieter. Okay. I'm, I'm looking towards EV type tires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're mentioning <laughs> what they have because they come with sound dampening materials Correct, and such, yeah. right? They're makes sense. Which which makes the uh, another car you reviewed recently, the CRV. Yeah. Very interesting because the car from the factory comes with a yeah, resonance uh, damper yeah, in, yeah, the, correct. in the wheels, not on the yeah. tires. So the tires don't have to be expensive. So like actually, the, it's something that I think uh, it's it's something very easy to follow for car makers, right? Yeah. Like even Lexus, they have hollow wheels. You know, because the the reason why they're hollow mm. is if they if they are solid, there's place uh, for sound and vibrations to go up yeah. into the cabin. Yeah. But if they're hollow, you know, they just die there. Yeah. So it's simple simple logic, lah, right? Yeah. But I I guess wheel resonators work work in the same manner as well. Yeah. But uh, uh, back to the topic of what you like about this car, especially mm. from a context of a family person going away on the weekends. Uh, with the family and okay. spending time on the highway. How's the efficiency of this car? Oh, that one beats everything under the sun. Really? Uh, hands down. I think this car beats a Proto, a Proto, a Proto Axia also. Yeah? yeah in, in terms, terms of, of efficiency, uh, yeah. range efficiency. and efficiency. Yes. So, I mean, what's the typical mileage that you get? I do um, my city driving, normal city driving, a bit of highway, you know, in, around town, like Klang yeah. Valley. Yeah. Uh, Theoretically, I can get 650, 650 kilometers. Holy crap! Yeah. Really? Yeah. If I really drive until it's dry, lah. I mean, yeah. I go on the mileage, right? No, but even if it's 620, 630. Correct. It's yeah. still a, yeah. <laughs> and and that one you really appreciate the car because of that. Yeah. I think all owners of this cannot deny they they really enjoy the yeah. efficiency. If I go uh, interstate, yeah, the efficiency goes up even higher because oh. you're cruising. Yeah, yeah, you're cruising, uh, right? Uh, so this entire concept of uh, because being a hybrid, hmm. it has electric motors hmm. at the front of the car that work uh, not t in tandem or... Do they work in tandem to the engine? You know it better. It works independently. They independently, have different functions, yeah. Correct. Uh, the two motors. Yeah. So the motors work better in traffic because they have a, a speed cap, I'm thinking, right? So that's that's why they work. This car is actually brilliant in heavy traffic mm -hmm. situation, just like an EV. Yeah. Right. So anyway, I guess that's that's what contributes to fuel efficiency. Yeah. But that also makes it heavier. Yeah. Do you think it handles good because it's heavier? Yes, and that is one of the reason. Like I said earlier, I did not want a plug-in hybrid mm. because plug-in hybrids have he uh, bigger, larger capacity batteries, yeah. and they're heavier. heavier. I like lightness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this car only has a one kilowatt hour battery in the back. Uh -huh. Uh, it weighs only about 17 kilos from okay. material I've read. Okay. okay. So that's minimal impact and it sits low. It's yeah. right on top of the fuel tank. So yeah. the center of gravity 
reduces overall yeah. and that contributes to the improved handling compared yeah. to the turbo versions. Correct. Yeah. And one, one of the other things about the uh, Civic, especially on the highway, was his responsiveness as well. Hmm. And that's where I guess uh, the motors provide that additional yeah. boost. Yeah. You know? So it's not only efficient, but it's also quite fun. La, so Very responsive. Yeah. That's that's the I think addictive part a little bit for a lot of owners, including myself. You this car weighs over one point three tons, eh? mm. Because but the electric motors have instant response. Mm -hmm. So it's very agile and nimble because mm. of that. You step on the throttle, it goes. So you, mm -hmm. you, you don't feel like you're driving a big car. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing, having said that, the other thing that I really like about this car is the augmented sounds that it makes. Yeah, that right? one is... Yeah, <laughs> that one, the, yeah, some people find it... I mean, I find it a bit weird. So, yeah. but yeah, yeah, it, it works, it makes sense. It, but yeah. I think to the people that don't know this and you put it into sport mode, yeah. it can actually fool you. Yes. You know, if you didn't know that it was piped through the, into the cabin through yeah. the speakers, is by the way, it's fake noises, right? So I, th I think it's brilliant because yeah. it actually responses to your throttle and it responses to the different level of throttle input as well. Mm -hmm. It's just not, it's not like an on-off switch, mm. you know? Um, but having said that, do you actually use the drive mode? Most of the time, I leave it in Econ, mm. normal driving, you know, I'm, I'm also, uh, you know, I like efficiency, so I leave it for yeah. maximum fuel savings. Uh -huh. <coughs> A bit more spirited, normal, but occasionally when I'm on windy roads and things, mm. yeah, I put it in sport mode. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I agree, the, the, the augmented sound yeah. works. I think the engineers have done a brilliant job of trying to achieve what they're trying to do with it. They're yeah. basically trying to um, feel the senses of yeah. the driver, yeah. uh, which is not easy in my view, because I, I looked at the engine bay and read a lot of material on this car. Mm. I know a lot about the technical <laughs> of this car. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's for what they're trying to do to actually artificially uh, provide sensual experience to the driver, yeah. you have to actually hide some of the natural acoustics of the car, mm. which is, and then I noticed that's why this car has uh, some roofing on top of the engine. Yeah. <clears throat> it has a very rigid uh, crankcase at the bottom okay. because it's trying to um, hide the engine noise ah. and and the computer is trying to give you what engine noise you should be hearing. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so it's just trying to isolate. Correct. The different it has to isolate. Side. So yeah. it's a lot. The engine powertrain is very quiet because of that. So, I mean, obviously the car is quite nice. It's mm. nice to drive. It has good tech mm -hmm. and it's good for the family as well. But it can't all be you know, a bit of roses, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me stuff that you actually don't like about the car. Okay. Um, yeah, there are a few things, but I also like to put that in context. Yeah. I'm not your average driver, mm -hmm. so to speak, yeah? Okay, because of my background, technical, yeah. I... Have this guy that. used to work with A1 GP. Yes. Formula, formula uh, open seaters back in the day. Yeah, and I worked in Formula 1 also. Yeah, but but that's on the uh, business side. Yeah. I'm also a driver. I, 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 I yeah. raced in Sepang. I've done rallying yeah. a long time ago, ages ago. So yeah. <coughs> I've been properly trained yeah. how to drive. So so yeah, different so. different type of owner, but still... Yeah. yeah. So I'm a bit demanding on the car, yeah. especially if it tries to be performance oriented. Yeah. Um, I feel that overall, overall this car is okay lah. Mm. It, it doesn't make me go wild yeah. like uh, driving a Lotus or a Porsche. Yeah. But uh, it's good enough. Uh, and then there are these niggles lah, yeah. which, which for normal comfort driving, it is annoying. Number one, uh, the tires. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I just feel that the tires are noisy, but I'm, I'm, I'm always wondering how come the engineers didn't... Pick up on that, it is huh? very intrusive. It yeah. is very intrusive at speed. Right? Yeah. Uh, at what speeds actually? Highway speeds. Lah. Highway 110, 100, you know, when you're, you're cruising speeds. Lah. So if somebody were to, uh, would be interested in buying this car, mm -hmm. that is something that you tell them to, you know? Just be prepared for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and okay. then be prepared to shh. No, to but it's good that, that you think that <laughs> there's a solution to it, like sound dampening. Uh, EV tires. Oh. The reason why EV tires as well because EV yeah. tires are they have sound dampening inside the tires, yeah. so it might be. Uh, so like, 
How come a Honda engineers didn't put the resonate, resonant damper like they yeah. did in the CRV? Maybe yeah. they didn't think about yeah. it back then, but that would help a lot. Correct. Yeah. And yeah. that might come in the facelift. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Honda Malaysia, if you're watching this. <laughs> so anyway, then besides that? Besides that is uh, um, steering feel. Hmm. Okay, okay la, it's electric power yeah. steering. Yeah. It's not a bad one. It's not a column mounted. It's uh, pinion mounted. But that's also because you're more in tune Correct, to how yeah. the car feels. Correct. So to the regular guy in the street. It's good enough. Yeah, it's good, it's enough. good enough. For me. Uh, that's, and, that's, and it actually responds to the uh, the drive mode selector as well. Like in so. sport. Yeah. In sport, it gets heavier. So, I mean, it gets heavier. It, does, it doesn't get more... You know, uh, communicative. So, mm. so to speak, it's just heavier lah, mm. to make it feel like you're more in control of the car. But besides all of that, I mean, what else could you point out? Um, I'm trying to think. Mm. The tires. No, but that's really good. Yeah. You're thinking hard about. <laughs> I knew there's something else, but it must have been oh, the the seats. Yeah. Um, that's basically about it. Mm. Um, I've been lucky with this car because you may have seen online also people complaining about problems with Civic yeah um, the steering rack issue yeah. and things gearbox. like that gearbox gearbox no problem whatsoever yeah. in fact this gearbox yeah. is going to be far more reliable than yeah. the normal variant because it has no transmission right it yep. just have a simple reduction gear it yeah, should last yeah. forever correct <laughs> so that's that's one thing that uh, uh, I think because if you if you follow if you follow the online communities, yeah. you know every time you we publish a video about yeah. Honda, there's always going to be some fellow that will put, that will comment about gearbox. Yeah. So the the solution to that would be to buy a, buy a Civic, a Civic <laughs> hybrid. RS, uh, EF, I yeah, yeah, no yeah. gearbox, travel, no CVT. Correct. There's no CVT. People get confused with your question. Yeah. That why it's eCVT. It's just to me a. Uh, Miss Normal, I yeah. Monica. So, actually, to the lame man, yeah. how would you explain it? Um, it's just a uh, normal um, gears inside yeah. that doesn't change. Yeah. Just have one fixed ratio, cannot change. That's all. Yeah. It's just a. Uh, Power sent directly to the wheels, lah. Yeah. yeah, well, in, in one of the modes, lah. Yeah. Because it has three operating modes. So Correct. One of the cruising modes, it power sends directly <laughs> to the wheels. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I, I think you're completely smitten with your car. Yeah, I enjoy yeah. it. I mean, yeah. like I said, this car is one of those that you, you look out and then you try, you can take a longer route, yeah. and the hands <laughs> off. And yeah. it, it doesn't meet my uh, typical high standards or so. It's, it, it's enjoyable to drive. Yeah. Um, if, if, <laughs> I'm a bit more demanding in the sense that I like my uh, front wheel to uh, my front end to turn in well you mm. know I this car does understeer yeah. <clears throat> so the feel in the front after um, you take corners hard like Kara you yeah. can feel that it, it doesn't communicate that well but yeah. that is by design yeah. I think to be safe yeah, better an understeery car than an yeah. oversteering car yeah, of course. for a normal driver yeah so I, I have some ideas I want to tweak that. Yeah. <laughs> I like the rear to step out a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. Uh, it does have what they call agile handling assist, blah, blah, mm. blah. And I do feel it. Sometimes the rear does slide a little bit. Yeah. I think it's the brakes working. So overall, um, yeah, I was looking at the Mazda 3. Actually yeah. also. <laughs> that wasn't a hybrid. But yeah. This overall car, this is well, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy this for next but, piece. Uh, from from an owner's perspective, mm. ownership perspective, right? I mean, it's been a year. Mm. How's it like going to the showroom, the service center, maintaining the car? Mm. How's how's that coming for you? Fortunate, uh, it's all been good. But mm. I'm also not a first Honda owner, so I already know what to yeah. avoid. So uh, even before when buying the car, I'm very particular about the sales agent. Mm. If I don't like his demeanor or his um, friendliness, and mm. I won't buy from him. Okay. I'm known to even go out of my way in the other state to oh. if I find a good one. Uh. So <laughs> uh, where do you uh, go now? Hmm? Where do you go now? ZN. Okay. In Glen Marie. Okay. Uh, my sales agent. That's uh, the one next to Mazda. Yes, right? and Kia. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and until today, I keep in touch with him. He that's told, that's the, uh, the that's a sales guy, the really tall guy that that he races as well. I can't yeah, remember I his name, but anyway, in, in Honda. Uh, uh, no, his, uh, at that particular dealership okay, as well. Right. I I, yeah. I I've forgotten his name. And he asked me 
uh, how to explain about uh, the EF yeah. variants, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the city and this. Correct. <laughs> because yeah. I, I guess when you are being trained for it, it can get a little bit technical. Like, yeah. And when you're selling cars, you want to dumb it down as much as Correct. possible. Yeah. You know? And yet still sound a bit smart. Like, you can't just say, oh, Tara Gearbox. Like, yeah. yeah. You cannot, uh, you have to be responsible in your information, yeah. like, but at the same time, you can't be a. Uh, an engineer yeah, I mean, yeah. the customer won't appreciate it they'll just fall asleep <laughs> but besides that how's the running cost I mean servicing good, good. I mean this is one of the benefits of this car yeah. running cost is low because yeah. fuel is low yeah. uh Running Position. cost is normal as Pacific. Yeah, um, yeah it's oil changes. In fact, the gearbox oil um, changes is I think hundred fifty thousand kilometers. Oh wow! Yeah, it's like so long because yeah, yeah. there's not. It doesn't have to. It doesn't get contaminated yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, there's a single ratio in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now, if there's somebody from Honda watching. Mm-hmm. I hope there's somebody from Honda watching, right? Hello, so, Mr. Honda. <laughs> so, <laughs> what would you tell this person on what would you have done differently or improved on? Or rather, what would you want them to know? Well, yeah, um, the weaknesses I mentioned before, the noise, tire noise, um, overall, it's a good product, yeah. hence it won the Malaysian Car of the Year award. Yeah. I totally agree with that, <laughs> not because I own it. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, I do have some questions out of curiosity I want to pose to the Honda yeah. guys if they're yeah. watching. Basically, a bit technical, slightly, but it's short. Uh, yeah. The engine itself, okay. uh, it's an Atkinson cycle engine. Yeah. I just want to know whether it always runs in Atkinson cycle or it changes mode to auto cycle. Okay. Because I noticed that at very high speeds, this car drinks. Okay. Uh, when when you are doing the um, legal speeds, okay. it's super efficient. Okay. But Anything when you start like going 120 and above and things like that, suddenly it's like any two liter and oh. it, it, it drinks. Okay. Control. Interesting. So I think maybe it switches mode or something. Right. Yeah. Besides that. Other than that, um, nothing. Uh, and, um, yeah, maybe to the audience, mm. uh, I feel it's a bit unfair that uh, a lot of uh, people complain about the. <laughs> well, not to say unfair, a problem is a problem. Yeah. Uh, but I made to understand that the steering rack is already there. Is already a product update. In fact, I received an mm. update notice okay. to go back and change. So okay. that. That, that means it can be fixed and it happens I don't like, have, yeah. uh, actually I'm lucky also uh, I don't have a chronic issue on the steering rack okay. one of the lucky ones as well. so that's the thing about products that are mass produced which I think a lot of people do not understand when you mass produce something a mm-hmm. product any product phones whatever there is a level of a, a percentage of failure or something that you might yeah. you know uh, so it happens you know but the good thing about manufacturers, even though in a country like Malaysia where we do not have lemon laws, mm-hmm. the good thing about manufacturers over here is that they actively listen and you know, uh, and they respond. The most important thing is that they respond. Yes. You know? uh, they might be slow, you know, but in a product like this where mm-hmm. you're selling thousands and thousands and everybody has your know, different ownership experience, it takes time. Yeah. You know? So, uh, I've 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 had my fair share fair share of issues yeah. as well, but I'm not the type that will go banging on the table in the yeah. showroom. Or, you know. I'm I'm quite sure you buy a million dollar Rolls Royce, so you are going to yeah. some unlucky owners. Yeah. Who have they have some updates. Issues. <laughs> they don't call it a recall; they just call it an update. Yeah. yeah? So definitely, man. Yeah. Definitely. Anyway, guys. Oh yeah. Any tips for potential owners? You must test drive this. Yeah. Don't ask how it feels uh-huh. like that. We will tell you like you, the, we, uh, I have a, a group with the owners. Everybody will say the same thing. Yeah. You have to test drive it. Then you know, yes or no, instantly. Dri- drive it to believe it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, guys, this is the good and bad segment where we allow owners to speak about their experience with your car. As I said, who better to review a car than the, than an owner? Anyway, as usual, thank you for watching. Do consider subscribing. Thanks, Azrai. Thank you, Keshi. Cheers, guys.